the fact that I, out of all people, am about to give college advice is alarming. Hey guys, it's Lauren. Right off the bat, this is my editing Instagram, and you should go follow it if you don't already. So if you're watching this right now, you may have already seen my college decisions reactions video. And since I've posted that, many people have reached out to me in terms of how much video editing, Instagram, and YouTube played a part in my application. So that's why I'm here today to tell the tale on how After Effects and video editing in general helped me get into schools like Northeastern, Emory, NYU, Northwestern and Brown which I will be attending in the fall Brown Brown so first let me start out by kind of describing what type of applicant I was and like how I pitched myself in my application and what I mean by that is for example if you want to be an engineering major you're gonna pitch yourself as a stem student you're gonna show that you took AP science and math classes maybe you were the captain of the robotics team or you were a research team leader like I was but the way I framed my application was not as simple as that I applied to all my schools intending to major in neuroscience on the pre-med track but I also made sure to include that I was interested in the arts like animation video editing media studies social media whatever I do on here but today I'm not gonna be talking about the sciencey parts of my application I'm gonna talk about the things that I did in high school and included on my application in relation to video editing social media and all that stuff so let's start off with the area I actually have the least to say about which is what I did within the school to show my interest and passion in video editing so my junior year instead of taking AP chemistry I took video production and I got an A plus in the course which obviously showed that I'm skilled in this area so in my school after someone takes video production they can go on to advanced video production and the only reason I wasn't placed in advanced video production at the start was because it took about like a month or two for my teacher to realize like the extent of my capabilities that kind of like surpassed what was being taught in the class that sounds really obnoxious but I promise it's not like but by that time it was just too late to switch classes so I was like whatever flash forward to my senior year I am now a teaching assistant for the video production class. Now usually how it works is you take video production, then you take advanced video production, and then you're able to become a teaching assistant. But I was able to become a teaching assistant without having taken the advanced course because both my teacher and the administration knew that I was equipped to being a teaching assistant based off of the stuff that I've already done outside of school in relation to video editing. So I just wanna to read to you what I added in the additional information section to explain this little predicament. I was unable to take advanced video production instead of video production my junior year because the course did not fit into my schedule. Nevertheless, I took regular video production junior year and was accepted as a teaching assistant for the course senior year, a position typically only given to a student who has taken both regular and advanced video production. With the A plus I received in video production, my years of prior experience with the editing program Adobe After Effects, my experience with editing the school news, and the learn to learn I created dedicating to teaching my peers how to edit videos, my teacher along with the arts department recognized my skill capacity and decided I would be an exemplary teaching assistant. Although not a part of my schedule, I also often help the advanced video production class during my study hall. And that's kind of how it ends in terms of me incorporating video editing into my actual academic life. So I have my computer for this next part because we're gonna take a trip down memory lane into the extracurriculars on my Common App. So if you're not familiar with the layout of Common App, there's basically a section where there are 10 slots that allow you to put 10 different extracurriculars that you did throughout your high school career. And you're supposed to list them in descending order of importance. So the activity that was most important to you is on the top and the activity that's like not as important to you is on the bottom. So the first activity I put on my list, meaning that is the most important to me, one that I contributed to the most is my YouTube page. When you list your activities, you have to include the activity type. So I put YouTube down as work, meaning that it's a job and I get paid. So I put that it was my job because I really wanted to stress that this is something serious in my life. This is my source of income. It's a project that I'm extremely dedicated to and it's not just some silly little side project. Then there's a slot where you add your position or leadership description and I said that I am a verified content creator. I made sure to add that I was verified which shows like this is something that I'm really successful at and then I put content creator because it sounds fancy pants and professional. Okay so next I had 150 characters to describe this activity. So I said 180,000 subscribers, 12 million plus total views, 
post video editing tutorials to educate and entertain. So of course that one sentence doesn't really wrap up the entire essence of my channel, but I kind of just wanted to sum up what I do and why I do it in a sentence that again sounds pretty professional. And then I also put conducts one-on-one -on -one virtual tutoring sessions. This isn't something that I really promote on my YouTube channel, but every once in a while I do one hour free editing Zoom sessions where I help people learn how to use After Effects. My participation grade levels were grades 11 and 12. For hours spent per week, I put 10. Now this may seem like a lot, but to be honest, it's probably more. I just didn't want to put any more than 10 because I feel like they would have looked at that and been like, she is lying. And then for weeks spent per year, I put 52 because I do post a new video every single week. And then I clicked yes to the box that said I intend to participate in a similar activity in college because I will continue with this channel into my secondary education in some form. Okay, so now if we scroll down a little bit to activity number eight, we have where I included my Instagram editing page. The reason I put it so much lower than YouTube is because YouTube is a form of income for me and it is more of like a job. Well, Instagram is more something that I do on the side, but it's still something that's really important to me. So I wanted to add it on here. So under activity type, I listed it under computer slash technology. And then for the position and leadership description, I said I'm a video editing influencer. Now I'm personally not the biggest fan of the word influencer because half the time an influencer isn't really someone who influences. Like, I don't know, I feel like the word has lost its meaning, but for the purpose, again, of sounding professional on here, I added influencer because I am a page with a good amount of followers, and I didn't want to just put, like, video editor. Don't judge me for this, please. <laughs> and now we have the description of the activity. So again, I started off with the stats. I put 151,000 followers and 40 million plus total views. Then for the description, I wrote, post video edits of TV shows and celebrities prevalent in pop culture. I just woke up. I don't know why I forgot to acknowledge this last part where it says offers paid edit commissions, but I added this to show that Instagram could also be a source of income. Although not as consistent or as professional as YouTube, I was still able to make some money on the side off of Instagram. I had a really hard time deciding what description I was going to do for this activity specifically. Because like, I wasn't going to put post weekly Riverdale edits of the popular ship Bughead. So I made sure to mention that these TV shows and celebrities are prevalent in pop culture again to make it sound more professional. So for participation grade levels, I put all four years because I started my freshman year of high school. Hours spent per week, six. And then for weeks spent per year, just like YouTube, I put 52. And I put yes to intending to participate in a similar activity in college. I'm probably still gonna be editing for my Instagram, but if I'm not, I still want to video edit in some form, whether it be for, you know, Brown University itself or maybe some outside institution. And the last thing that's sort of editing related in my extracurricular list is activity number four five, which is my position as editor of the opinion section of our school newspaper. And you may be thinking, how does that have anything to do with video editing? But in affiliation with our school newspaper is a weekly school news video broadcast in which I was a co-editor of. So in my description, I added co-editor of monthly school news broadcast. I also made sure to add a link to my YouTube channel in the additional information section, but I did not add a link to my Instagram editing page. This is mainly for two reasons. The first one being, I'm not as professional on my Instagram as I am on my YouTube. And I was just imagining a scenario in which I post a silly Instagram story one day. The silly Instagram story in question. But that also happens to be the day that the admissions officers are looking over my application and checking out my Instagram page. And I just didn't want to take that chance. And the other reason for not providing a link to my Instagram page was because I had an opportunity to actually submit some of my edits handpicked by me without having to give them the link to my Instagram page. So that goes into the next part of the application I want to talk about, which is Slide Room. So Slide Room is basically a website in affiliation with some college applications in which you can submit an arts portfolio. So this can be film, visual arts, illustration, stuff like that. Only two of the schools I applied to had this feature, which were Columbia and Brown. And as you know, I ended up getting into Brown. Okay, so here's a picture of the Brown Slide Room website. Like I mentioned, there were a lot of different categories in which you could submit your art under, but I chose visual art because they gave me 15 slots to submit 15 different edits. So as you can see, I just handpicked some of my favorite edits. And this was honestly really scary for me because I didn't know if they would get it or if they would think it was like weird or juvenile. For example, I wasn't uncomfortable submitting something like this because I feel like the main focus of an edit like this are the transitions and the 3D components more than the actual photos themselves. But then when I submitted an edit like this, 
I was like, is this weird? Like, it's kind of weird, right? Cause it's like a relationship edit. Like, I don't know. Maybe they looked at it and did think it was weird, but I still ended up getting in, so I'm fine with it. <laughs> so I hope my experience helps you guys feel more confident in submitting maybe a couple of your edits to a college. All right, and now for the last part of my application that included video editing, we have my personal essay. So my personal essay was completely based around After Effects. It was an extended metaphor for how the progression of a transition from keyframe one to keyframe two is very similar to my own personal development. It sounds confusing when I explain it, so I'm just gonna read some segments of it in which I mention video editing. It was a labyrinth of panels colored in 50 shades of dull gray, the paradoxical storm before the calm. The interface of the video editing program Adobe After Effects is an acutely unwelcoming and complex software that, when opened for the first time, provoked me to immediately close my laptop and enroll in geometry summer school instead. Perhaps I was a bit dramatic, as I've become far more accustomed to this format than geometric proofs. So my entire essay starts off with the first time I opened After Effects in 2017. One appeal of After Effects is its ability to create smooth panning transitions between videos or photos. What initially perplexed me was the concept of a keyframe, the building block of a transition that marks a point in time where the image is situated at a certain position. So this was the part of my essay I probably worked on for the longest, and I had to introduce the concept of a keyframe in a way that was not complicated. My first keyframe presents itself in 2012 with my first YouTube video desperately titled about my account parentheses please watch. So I'm not going to read the rest of this paragraph because it's pretty personal but it's basically about how when I was eight or nine I moved from state A to state B and I really didn't have any friends like the culture was different so I decided to create a YouTube channel where I posted videos of my Monster High dolls. That is of course not the channel that I'm on today. It is a channel that I hope none of you ever find. But on that channel, I basically just recorded like Monster High doll reviews. I did little skits between the dolls. But the most important part is that I never showed my face. The camera was always flipped to them. Unlike a PowerPoint that swoops quickly from slide to slide, an After Effects transition follows an exponential path. The image will gradually start sliding to the right before it accelerates abruptly towards the next keyframe value. The intermediate period of change progresses so slowly that it is difficult to discern, like when I ditched my painfully tight ponytail for a moderately tight one throughout my five years of elementary school. Then there was middle school, where I traded my obsession with one corny CW show for another. Considering the exponentiality of my growth, these minuscule experiences precede more pivotal and defining occurrences. The gradual loosening of my ponytail led me to bleach my hair four times within a year, just as my fixation with Riverdale in 2017 provoked my revisitation of After Effects to make edits of my favorite characters. Especially noteworthy, the latter drove me to create an Instagram editing account that now has accumulated 151,000 followers as an, and is an exceptional medium for creative expression. This empowering experience carries me directly to the crest of the exponential graph, the end of my transition. Galvanized to help my Instagram platform navigate the intricacies of After Effects in order to make their own videos and be part of an international network of editors, another YouTube page comes to fruition. My second keyframe reveals itself as the channel Lauren, this name engraved on a silver plaque to commemorate 180,000 subscribers. When I'm not screen recording the interface of After Effects for an editing tutorial, the lens of my Canon EOS is flipped towards the skin I'm no longer hesitant to adorn. Using this online catalyst to project rather than conceal I've reached the summit of my evolution. Although I present a definitive beginning, middle, and end, this plot accounts for one clip out of the hundreds that form the completed edit and tell the full story. As I eagerly enter the following clip along the timeline of my life, perhaps my next two keyframes will underscore my progress as a prospective medical student who understands neural pathways more than New Jersey roads, or contrastingly, my maturation as an editor. Yet beyond this remains a vast space to fill before the edit is finalized. I will always be transitioning into new phases of being defined by an origin and a peak, yet there is a profound significance in the intermediate uncertainty in which my identity is framed by instances of immense triumph, imposter syndrome, and impulsive piercings. This expanse of gray often feels like a labyrinth complete with constant misdirection, but its after effects are worthwhile. So that was a lot to take in. <laughs> so I wanted to stress in my essay that it is my experience with video editing that has shaped me into the person I am today. And I'm not talking about just a person who now has hundreds of thousands of followers. I'm talking about a person who is now super confident in themselves, but someone who still appreciates all of the steps that it took to get to the point where I am now. But what I want to emphasize is not just keyframe one and keyframe two, 
two, but that space between the two keyframes where I'm changing who I am. If you've watched any of my tutorials, you probably know what an After Effects speed graph looks like, but if you're not familiar, this is it. It is a graph in which the transition starts out really, really slowly, as shown by that really flat line in the beginning. But then as you approach keyframe two, you can see it just shoots up because the transition is going really quick now. And that's exactly how my own personal development went. And towards the end, I made sure to mention that this transition from keyframe one and keyframe two only makes up one clip. But if you're an editor or just know anything about editing, you'll know that an edit has hundreds of clips. And I express how I'm excited to move on to the next clip in my life. So in this video, I was able to show you guys how I incorporated my passion project all throughout my college application. And with my personal essay specifically, I was able to build a narrative of my application. And if you're looking to get into any top schools or just your dream college specifically, I'm going to introduce you guys to a wonderful company who will help you do just that. Acceptatods is a company founded and run 100% by Harvard students who can help you build your unique narrative for college applications. This is a form of personalized college counseling from Harvard students who went through the exact same experience that you're going through right now. Some of their services include doing mock interviews, helping you edit your essays, helping you build your narrative that will be present throughout your entire application, helping you edit your essays, and most importantly, in my opinion, they help you to form your own unique passion project. All of the mentors are super supportive and they are attentive to your needs. So if you're interested in Acceptatuz and all the services they offer, all the information, including how to sign up for these services will be linked in the description. All right, so that's it for today's video. I hope you all enjoyed and I'll see you guys soon. Bye.